friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you the plants that I find work best or worst in semi-hydroponics. This is actually a video that was voted on by my patrons. They selected it, so thank you patrons for picking this out. I'm actually really excited to share it with you. I have been growing different types of plants in pollen or semi-hydroponics for I feel like three or four years now and there's been some that have worked really well and some that haven't as much so I thought I would go through my thoughts on those with all of you and share my experience so yeah if you are new here and you don't know me already my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet so if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and maybe learn something along the way stick around watch more of my videos and subscribe to my channel if you're not new here thanks for coming back I really appreciate it. <laughs> Let's get into it. So I think I'm gonna alternate between best and worst because why not? But one of the best that I have found in semi-hydro, Marantas. They grow so, so well in semi-hydro in a self-watering system. I'm actually gonna be talking about all of these in terms of a self-watering system because that is how I most frequently use pollen or semi-hydroponics. I do have some cacti and succulents in a non-self-watering system, but I feel like that's kind of a different style of growing. So I'm talking about self-watering. And Marantas freaking eat this up. They definitely enjoy staying a lot more moist. They are a plant that loves to have moisture by their roots and humidity. And I find that when I have Marantas in soil, they tend to be a bit more difficult for me. I tend to be a bit of a chronic underwaterer as opposed to an overwaterer and so plants like Marantas that like that like moisture and damp soil tend to be harder for me in soil but as soon as I put my Marantas in pond they have been doing so so well they've absolutely been thriving and yes I have had times where I've forgotten to water them still and they've not done the best but they're really great at honestly just starting over. You could chop them back to the base and leave their roots in semi-hydro and they will pop back up. And so they are quite forgiving. This one does have a little bit of brown edges because of lack of humidity, I think. But in general, having things in a self-watering system does boost the surrounding humidity a little bit, which is again, helpful for plants like Marantas. But honestly, I don't think I would have had such like big growth and like gorgeous, huge leaves if I wasn't growing in something like semi-hydro. I don't think that I personally can keep the plant nearly as happy in soil. And so this is one that I will forever be putting in semi-hydro if I buy a new Maranta or get cuttings of one, they're going straight in semi-hydro because that is honestly the best and only way I've been able to grow these successfully. So they absolutely love it. So the first one on my worst list is Syndapsis. So I've actually put several Syndapsis into semi-hydro. Actually the first plant I ever put into Lachusapon was my Syndapsis exotica and that one is honestly doing quite well but I find that in general they don't grow as quickly for me in semi-hydro and maybe that's just a fertilizing issue but I find that they tend to be a bit slower in sort of pond situations. Also I find that plants that trail tend to struggle a little bit more in sort of this pond because they can get quite heavy and although pond is a heavy substrate when you have a lot of it on like a big plant in a small plant like this I feel like this is just waiting to pull itself out of here by weighing itself down. And so in general, trailing plants, I don't think they work as well in pawn. So I have my silver lady in pawn on a moss pole and it's doing a little bit better. I'm not worried about it falling out, but in general, I think I'd prefer to put like syndapsis into soil. I'm like genuinely thinking of switching this one to soil. Also, oh my goodness, this was an absolute mess with this exact plant. I, I was propagating it for quite a long time and I finally decided to pot it up 
into pawn and it very promptly lost it's one leaf and so it was kind of just a stump for the longest time i swear it was like literal months like maybe four or five six months where it was just a stump in pawn and it took so 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 long to put out any new growth and even still it doesn't have much i don't know if it was like going into the semi hydro's fault that it dropped the leaf but it's kind of scarred me now and I am a lot less likely to put Nadaptis into Pond or Semi Hydro. I don't think if I got any new sort of cuttings or propagations of them that I would put them into Semi Hydro. And if one was quite established already, and it would probably be trailing because established Nadaptis tend to be trailing, I just, I wouldn't put it in Semi Hydro. Like I said, I'm tempted to take this one out of the semi hydro and add it in with my other silver hero or platinum i don't know which one it is um anyways i'll add it in with the other one that i have in soil on a lazy pole because i mean it's obviously ready for a pole but yeah i just i wouldn't do it again and i'm not saying they're bad and you can have success with them but in my experience it wouldn't be the choice that i would make Another really great plant for pawn or semi-hydro is philodendrons. I think they absolutely eat it up. In general, philodendrons tend to be fairly easygoing anyways, and so when you put them in a medium that is even easier than soil and like a self-watering system, they're just going to absolutely thrive. I think I put this one in semi-hydro when I chopped it down here and you can see that the stem definitely has increased in size. I think that might be partially due to it being on a moss pole but it has been so 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 happy living in semi-hydro that I don't ever plan on taking it out. And honestly it's just such an easy going plant. It makes growing philodendron is so so much easier. I can kind of set and forget it rather than like having to worry about it all the time because I don't have to water it as often as I would when it is in soil. That being said, I have tons of philodendrons in soil as well. It is one of the genuses that I could go either way on. I have plants that are happy in either and so it's kind of just however I'm feeling on that day that I'm potting it up from props or like occasionally I'll switch one from soil to pawn, but it's definitely not like a sort of mandatory thing like it is with the Marantas that I have where they're automatically going into pawn. But yeah, they just thrive and are happy and in general, they're so easygoing that it makes, it makes them like even more of a low maintenance plant, which I really like because sometimes I could be a very lazy plant parent and so having your philodendrons in something like this is great. I would though say that maybe something like a heart leaf or a mykins might not do as well because it is hanging or trailing. And like I said, they don't do as well in semi-hydro, but if it's climbing or sort of a bushy philodendron, absolutely, I'd say go for it. And they'll just, they'll just eat it right up. So yeah. The next one that I've not found to be amazing in Pond or Semi Hydro is Hoyas. I know a lot of people swear by putting Hoyas in Pond, and I do have several types in Pond as well, but in general, I haven't seen them grow as well in Semi Hydro. This is actually the biggest one that I have in Semi Hydro, and I don't know how happy it is. I think it's only really happy at the top right now because it's quite close to a grow light and so that's why it's growing so well. I think it does encourage slightly slower growth because I know this is otherwise quite a fast growing Hoya. And also again, you get the trailing issue, but since this one's on a trellis, it's fine. I also have several Hoyas in pond in my cabinet in like really small pots. And honestly, I find that they take freaking forever to do anything. I've had like 
my gray ghost for oh my god probably like six months in pawn and it's done nothing maybe it's flat mites but i did look on it and i didn't see any flat mites when i had a look under the microscope so who knows maybe i need to look again but it's just doing absolutely nothing whereas all of the hoyas that i've ever propped and then put into something like soil have just done so much better and i feel a lot more confident with them in soil so i don't know i think it makes more sense for me to grow them that way also because they are epiphytic they will naturally like climb things and like a very chunky barky sort of mix when it comes to their soil i feel like semi-hydro is very different from that and i know you can get coarse semi-hydro from soil ninja or wherever but i feel like it doesn't give that same sort of airiness hold that i want them to have i don't know for some reason in my brain it feels like it's just that way i think i'm probably not going to be putting many more hoyas in two pawn i won't take the ones that i have out of pawn i don't think but the ones that i get coming in or any new props i will likely put into soil just because i find that to be a bit of an easier process and I find that they grow better for me that way. Another plant that I almost exclusively have in pond or semi-hydro is alocasias. Y'all saw when I did my alocasia tour that every single one of my alocasias is in pond. No matter how I get an alocasia, whether it be a corm or buying a full plant, I will be transferring it to pond because it is the best 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 way to grow alocasias in my experience they like marantas really love staying quite moist at their roots and so having them in self-watering in pond keeps them a lot more moist and i don't need to worry and stress about the water that I would need to otherwise stress about if they were in soil and keeping them as like moist as they would want to be. So anytime I get one going straight into pond and they absolutely freaking love it. This is my dragon scale and ah uh, this started with like one leaf because I imported it and all the other leaves died off and it even suffered from like stem rot and I was able to bring it back and look at her now she's got like six leaves and they're so happy and i honestly attribute that massively to being in semi-hydro because i think that they absolutely love it and i would not grow alocasias any other way i think i would find them so much more difficult and the times i have had alocasias in soil i felt like they were so much more likely to suffer with the one in one out policy or I don't know just not be as healthy in general maybe go dormant i don't know if that's just because i've become a better plant parent since then or what but i think part of my success is definitely due to keeping them in semi-hydro or pond also if i'm ever growing one from a corm i'll put it straight in from the shallow puddle method which is basically a tiny little pot of water that they sit in to grow roots as soon as they like start sprouting a leaf i'll put it straight into pond and they tend to really like that switch i've never had any issues with them rotting after that it's just been a very easy process and they make alocasias so 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 easy in my experience so i really like my alocasias in semi-hydro so this next one is epip remnum and i wouldn't say they are the worst in pawn i just wouldn't ever put them into pawn potentially panatums as they're a bit more climbing but even still i find that they are so forgiving watering wise that i don't feel like it's necessary to give them that sort of self-watering situation you can i don't think they would complain because they are so easygoing but if I have an epipramnum, I'm almost certainly going to be putting it in soil rather than into semi-hydroponics. I actually only just realized in my epipramnum collection video that this is the only epipramnum I have in semi-hydro. And it's in semi-hydro because I received it in semi-hydro. I did not put it in here. 
I might end up taking it out because eventually it'll probably grow to be traily, but I think the Shangri-La in general tend to be a bit more upright, so I don't think it'll be as big of an issue as something like the Enjoy that I have, which I feel like would just pull the pollen right out because it's so heavy. I don't know, for some reason soil I feel like holds things in a little bit better, and so when a plant is trailing, having them in soil just like I feel like they can bear down easier in it. I don't know if that makes sense at all, but that's kind of how I feel. I mean, I feel like they just do perfectly fine in soil, so it's not something that I feel is as necessary for these. And then the last one that I am going to talk about is Syngoniums, and honestly, I think they grow really, really well in Pawn or Semi-Hydro. I have a few actually in semi-hydro and I kind of think that they grow better in that than in soil. I've found them a lot easier to care for in semi-hydro than in soil and they grow a little bit faster in those situations as well. But this is another one that I don't think I would automatically switch if I had a well-established plant of Syngonium in soil. I probably wouldn't make the switch to pond unless I feel like I'm struggling with it and then maybe that would help it and that sort of change might benefit it, but if I get one in soil, it's probably going to stay in soil. These ones, they're in pond because I got them as cuttings and like it made sense logically for me to naturally go there. So it's where I would go with cuttings. I also think that semi-hydro might be the reason why some of my syngoniums have been a bit more pest free. Syngoniums in general tend to be quite pest magnets for me, but the ones that I have in semi-hydro don't seem to be getting pests as often as the ones in soil or at all. So maybe that is a thing. It might just be circumstantial and it happens to be the ones that pests are attracted to are the ones in soil because they're slightly less healthy for some reason. I don't know. But I do think it does help them stay a little bit more pest free, which I'm not gonna complain about because I don't want my plants to have pests. So yeah. So that is it. Those are the plants that I find to be the best and the worst in pond or semi-hydro. Remember though that this is just my experience. I highly recommend trying it out for yourselves. Give each of these plants a go and see if pond is right for you in your environment because everybody's situation is going to be slightly different because everyone's watering style is gonna be different and everyone's home is different. So just because one works really, really well for me doesn't mean it's necessarily gonna work well for you and vice versa. If one works terribly for me, like Hoya, <laughs> It might work amazingly for you, and I've heard so, so many people swear by Hoya in Pond, so definitely take all of this with a grain of salt and experiment for yourself and try them out. Before I sign off, I wanted to say a big thank you to the newest member of the Patreon Good Growing Fam, Claire Sarah. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it, and I hope you really enjoy it over there. If any of you are interested in joining the Patreon, there's loads of bonus content and exclusive stuff over there, extra videos, live chats, etc. It is only three pounds or I think about four dollars. I think that's the current conversion-ish. Um, but you get everything in that. I don't have tiers, I just have one big happy good growing fam where you get everything. And I like to think of it as you getting me a cup of coffee or running a single one of my grow lights for a month. So <laughs> I would really very much so appreciate it. Of course, there's absolutely no pressure you don't have to join in there. It doesn't affect the content here. And yeah, so no pressure. Anyways, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other housemanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.